Uh, hi people, it's me again, Marino Ravenberg. I hope you like your new backdrop. Um, I simply placed my plasma TV in my bedroom because I barely use it in the living room and I definitely don't regret my decision. Also makes for a nice decor, blah blah blah, what have you. Anyways, as uh, let's get down to business. Um, just something mundane uh, reminded me to uh, do a video specifically about this bit. Um, yeah, as you can tell based on the header from this video, it's named after a verse in the New Testament. Um, specifically, uh, yeah, um, Matthew 7.15. Beware of false prophets which come, to you, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh, most people are familiar with this. <coughs> most people are familiar with this, I repeat. Um, and this saying is simply a reference, and most of us also know what this saying is in reference to. That, um, generally speaking, you have people that function as uh, the alleged messenger or the quote-unquote messenger uh, of God in society. People such as priests and whatnot. And... In reality, these people are hypocrisy defined. That's what we know it as. Okay, by we, I obviously mean the people that know what I'm talking about and or referring to. But um, even for the people that don't know, um, now you do, at the very least, as shortly summarized as possible. But I'm going to elaborate on that. This saying specifically refers to televangelists, for example, and any charlatan, basically any person that claims to be a man or woman of God, or someone that is here to serve as some kind of medium or some kind of messenger on God's behalf, or any, any kind of celestial or have any kind of celestial of affinity or affiliation, but in reality is only there for his own gain. For people that don't know what a televangelist is, um, you can wait until the end of this video or you can check the link in the description below uh, to see what I'm referring to. I have a video that is a picture perfect example of a televangelist and um, who a televangelist is and whatnot. But uh, anyways, the... Um Hold on, let me just get this now. Mouse cursor. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, um, a televangelist is basically, for people that don't know again, a televangelist, um, as far as I know, it's an abbreviation of the word uh, either telecommunications or just tele from television. And evangelist is simply an evangelist or evangelical. Uh, a member of the evangelical church as far as I know. I think the, it's a fusion of those two words. Um, anyways, it's simply um, one of those guys that you see on TV uh, in general that is a pastor of a church and that allegedly heals people during by hosting sermons and whatnot. And the example that I've given in the uh, video link to the description that I was referring to earlier and or the one that will show up at the end screen this perfectly highlights basically what a wolf in sheep's clothing is, okay, and what a false prophet is specifically. Uh, long story short, this televangelist claimed to be able to heal people and know a good deal about their lives and whatnot. But in reality, it's simply his wife whispering all the information to him that both the both of them gather during preliminary research on on a couple of visitors or people that visit their sermons. Uh, and it's, she's basically spewing all the information to him through an audio feed. So the guy, the televangelist, would basically uh, behave along the lines of um, a woman, for example, coming forward as in, come forward, let me heal you. Uh, your name is Lisa something, right? Yeah. And you live at blah, blah, blah. That's his wife telling him or giving him all the information. And um, that includes illnesses that this person might have and whatnot. So to someone that literally doesn't know better, it looks like the guy is genuinely clairvoyant and that he can heal her genuinely. But of course that's all nonsense, okay? That's literally and figuratively all nonsense. And in reality, um, these televangelists accept a good deal of, of, of church donations, a good deal of church donations. Of course, as I stated in an earlier video, um, I... I think I'm going to link that in this um, 
I'm also going to link that in the description as well as in the end screen. Um, at the time of this recording, I don't know what the name of the video is exactly, but in any case, I am going to link it and also to the end screen in the description as well as to the end screen. Uh, an earlier video of mine in which uh, I discuss in general that mainstream re religious organizations, for example, the Catholic Church as a whole, the Vatican and all of that, these are just businesses. These guys are literally just using God's name and they're doing business with it basically by, by simply cashing in on people that are desperate to, to the point where they go to the church or people that simply go to church for guidance and whatnot. Uh, yeah, that's just, that's, uh, well, it, it speaks for itself. I don't have to say what that is. It, it is offensive to someone that's genuinely looking for help or someone that's genuinely looking for guidance. But, you know, um, the world we live in is, for the most part, not pleasant. Okay, last time I checked, <laughs> so to speak. So you can imagine what it's like. And so yeah, I'm also gonna link that video in the description as well as in the end screen, like I said. And uh, yeah, so that's it in general. Uh, that's what a televangelist is. And that is a picture perfect example of what this Bible verse describes as in beware of false prophets. These people are false prophets. They literally just take advantage of God's name essentially um, to those that are in need of, of help from God or celestial or heavenly guidance and they simply swindle these people for all their work more or less. Uh, in the story I was referring to earlier, I think the story also contained another story in which a couple said that they gave $4,000 to the televangelist and it's a um, thingy, it's a news network that basically covers this story or that does this story and the second the reporter tries to confront the televangelist he just races away in his car uh, almost hurting the reporter in the process by slamming his hand against um, the, his car door in his haste to drive away why do you think the guy is so he's so desperate to get away I mean the guy's a con I mean no nah. and yeah uh, unfortunately he's anything but the only one but this is something that I would simply like to remind people. Do not be so gullible. When you look at the church in general, any religious establishment that you go to, any one of them, the people that go to church in general, I'm not just referring to the Christian-based institutions. No, 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 no. This accounts for every mainstream religion. Every mainstream religion. Um, when you go to, to any of these uh, establishments, any house of prayer essentially, what are the kind of people you see? You see people from the lowest classes of society, and I'm not referring to money. You're, you see people that are in need, people that are so desperate because their lives are such a living hell or a night and or a nightmare, that in their desperations, they in their desperation, sorry, singular, they flee to the church, they flee to the religious establishment. When you're in such pain and in such misery, for example, you're about to end up alongside the street your crappy house that you lived in is on the verge of being foreclosed or similar, you name it, anything similar. You literally find yourself with your back against the wall and life is filled with des despair and, and negativity. You become so vulnerable to the point where you'll believe anything that anyone says. You'll believe any solution that any person offers and that's what these guys prey on. That's why they're referenced as ravenous wolves, okay? Uh, and um, and that's why uh, hold on that's why they're referred to as ravenous wolves and that's why it's also said that they come in sheep's clothing I just briefly had to look it up yeah, yeah. <coughs> I had to look at the saying again uh, I, I'm well aware of this saying but still you know beware of the false prophets they come to you as uh, sheep but in disguise but from the inside they're ravenous wolves so yeah, um, these, um, these establishments, they simply claim to offer you salvation. They claim to offer you help with all of your problems and to make all of them go away. And um, in reality, it doesn't. But similar to politicians, um, these establishments, any, any real-time help, any real-time 
benefit that an individual gains from them in general or their community as a whole, so a group of individuals gain from them, any benefit that they get from them or any gains that they make through them is via a collective effort, okay? These establishments don't do anything that that uh, that I couldn't do. Are you kidding me? I could offer you, if I had to simply offer you basic counseling, then things would go better, okay? And these people, like I said, as vulnerable as they are, they actually legitimately think that their establishments, their quote-unquote church is helping them. And they keep praising the church and they keep telling others and it just goes on, you know, and the prophetic cycle just continues and more and more members flock to it. I mean, I've seen this in real life. When you go to any church, any establishment, religious establishment, what are the kind of people you see? The only people that you won't see there that are desperate or whose lives are not in shambles or who are not in danger of, 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 the, of having their lives fall apart are people that go to church for guidance, for good measure, for example, old people, the elderly, people that are somewhat afraid of death or fearful of death. And they simply go to the church because they want to, they go to church because they, because they, they, just for good measure, they don't want to go to hell, let's just put it that way. You know, I see those people as well. You've got old people that literally, they're kind of afraid of death, so they simply go to church to get a better understanding or a better grasp of, of what awaits them when they pass on. And it just goes on. Uh, people for good measure, and obviously people that are in on the, 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 the entirety of the scam, and they also benefit from it financially. That is all that these organizations are. But um, do not, I want to say the last thing you should expect from these establishments is um, genuine guidance. But there are bound to be exceptions, obviously, but those are just that exceptions. And I want to say that this is the last thing that you should, you should expect in general from these establishments, but uh, not even the last thing. No, no, no. Okay, so you can safely say that 99 out of 100 quote-unquote churches are nothing more than a scam. They only care about you putting as much money in the collection, collection plate as possible, or you giving as much, or donating, or contributing um, as much financial resources to them as possible. And in exchange, they simply tell you what you want to hear. Okay, similar to a motivational speaker telling you what you want to hear. You come to them with your problems and they'll simply tell you, keep hanging there, just keep going, you'll see you'll do better, etc. Or, you know, I'll come to visit you. Oh, your house isn't that bad looking. Yes, it's still dilapidated, but it still looks decent. Just hang in there, etc. Are you kidding me? I can do that in less than five, less than a minute, and that's it. So, yeah, that's essentially what these guys thrive on. And that's how they uh, keep their, their businesses, their quote-unquote businesses running. That's all. The world is filled with needy and desperate people that find themselves with their backs against the wall. People suffer day in, day out, and everything else in between. But as the law of the universe goes, the way God created it, as above, so below. You can't have agony without joy, and you can't have joy without agony, etc. And it just goes on. As above, so below. So, no pain, no pleasure. Instead of no pain, no gain. <laughs> the same we all know. But these establishments, yeah, they're definitely um, things that you need to keep an eye on. They're definitely not something you should go to. I wouldn't condone or advocate any person going to a quote-unquote church or something. If you find yourself with your back against the wall and life is such a living hell, I would advise you to genuine and you are incapable of solving your own problems because you're too vulnerable or you're not mentally strong enough. To do so, then I would simply advise you actually step to someone who can, uh, but do not, okay, do not allow yourself, okay, muster up the remaining strength you have, or the remaining clarity you have, or the remaining, again, energy you have, to simply step back and gain some clarity, and genuinely look for help from someone um, that genuinely wants to help you and that will have your best interest at heart and simply be cautious of, of, of every amount of money you need to spend or any kind of resources you need to forfeit in order to get help. 
and the story. But um, loosely put, you would be better off with a therapist or a psychologist, honestly, or any kind of guidance counselor uh, from the state, for example, like um, simply filing for bankruptcy and getting state-approved uh, financial support. You name it. Even that would be better, honestly, because they're not going to bullshit you in general. I mean, they are in some instances, but in general, not the case. You're just going to be assigned a social worker and she's going to look at your life and say, okay, we're going to cut back on this and this and this and this. You only get the necessities to spend, as in only food, absolute stuff that you need to get by. No luxuries whatsoever. And so that you end up going from red to green uh, balance-wise, bank balance-wise. So you'll no longer be in debt and uh, once all of that has been cleared up or cleared away or squared away, you name it, then then, <coughs> then at least that's an improvement and you'll be able to actually breathe a sigh of relief because you're not going to end up alongside the street or similar. And then you can gain some perspective and actually build towards a, an actual bright future. But um, these establishments or these quote-unquote churches are definitely not the answer, okay? They're definitely not the answer. Otherwise, you would notice improvement and substantial improvement in your life. But, you know, just show me one church core that has genuinely advanced substantially in his life thanks to the church and what they offer. See, what, what are the thoughts and prayers and whatnot? Of course, it's all... I said, it's all nothing but hogwash, nothing but nonsense, absolute bollocks. So yeah, that's all. I'll hear uh, what anyone else has to say or anyone's opinion in the uh, comment section and see you later. Ciao.